right, so I have a very special treat for all of you out there. My name is Mike Lyon, and I've got uh, Jeff Turner on. Jeff Turner is really what I would call a thought leader uh, in the real estate community, the real estate industry, and he was our keynote speaker at the Digital Technologies Forum at PCBC this year. Jeff Turner, great to have you. Nice to be here. Thank you for that warm introduction. Though I, I, I often uh, wig out a little bit when somebody calls me a thought leader. There's a lot of a lot of pressure put on you when somebody throws that label on you. I could go with guru. You know, well, that's worse. It's <laughs> worse. So you know, guys. For those of you who don't know Jeff, just go check him out. You can Google him and find out more about him. But uh, right now, he's running a company called Zeke. Uh, Zeke Interactive isn't that the full mm -hmm. name? That's the proper that's name. Uh, he, he's been involved in the real estate space for a long time. He's working with Real Satisfied, uh, real, estate, uh, pre, real Estate Pros. What was the uh, Real Estate Presentation Software? I remember this in uh, Real Estate like, Shows. Real yeah, Estate was, Shows. That was, that's been around for a long time. Oh, I loved it. Beautiful music. and I mean, we, were, we were the first in yeah. this space to use the Ken Burns effect to do a virtual tour. We're very proud of that fact. We're very proud of the fact that we you know, changed the pricing model in residential real estate for virtual tours and you know, sort of shifted people's mindset about it. You know what the online experience around the home could be. That you know what I actually wrote a blog before I was ever like, you know, doing any kind of consulting. I just said this is the coolest stuff. Check it out and created a quick tour. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. Oh, and I thought it was you. great. Appreciate so, that. Um, anyway, um, back. T tell us a little bit just about why you love this industry. Why do you love the real estate community and the people and everybody that you're involved with? That's that, it's kind of a key to this conversation. Well, so real estate for me is an is an interesting industry because it it touches people at literally the place where they live. And you know, so much of our lives are wrapped around our homes and the feeling of home and um, we romanticize home. We I mean everything about that just speaks to things that you know I I love and and uh, want to be a part of, and that includes concepts like community and family and values, and I think real estate as an industry specifically and especially home builders have a really unique opportunity to to do something special in impacting people's lives, um, not just you know. In, in where they live, but in the community that they build around the place they live and how they communicate about that community and how they bring people together. Um, I think from my perspective, most builders miss out on that opportunity. I'm in a, a home that I bought, you know, brand new, uh, got to pick everything on the inside of it. Um, but my builder fell short in really taking the opportunity when people were excited about moving into this place to tie us together and tie us together to them to create a lifelong relationship. And I, I think to, to get there, builders have to move away from a, a project mentality mm. to begin thinking about their brand as a more inclusive structure that represents something bigger than just that community or that, that home model that somebody buys. Um, and I, I just think there's a tremendous opportunity to do great things. You know, l let's talk about that for a second here because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, one thing that you're able to do very well is cut through a lot of hype. Uh, it, you know, this new product, this new tool, and that's the one thing I love about following you on Twitter is you're always looking at some of the new stuff and saying, okay, we'll see how this plays out because you really understand the technology, but also you really tie it into that, what you just said there, branding, positioning, what mm -hmm. it really means, and the community side of it. Mm -hmm. So it's this you have kind of this interesting multiple layered um, uh, type of take or, 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 or the perception of what you've got. And, and that's what I find so interesting from the technology standpoint. And if you shift that a little bit over there to what you're saying about building the community, I, it seems like now more than ever, that's easier to do. Yet we still, it, we still don't seem to take easier, advantage of it. It's easier and harder because people, um, people place too much of their focus on what the technology does as opposed to what their particular mission is or what mm. they're trying to accomplish with technology. Um, and we fall prey to the easy because we want things to be easy. We want to click a button. We want, to, we, we want to believe that when you click like, you're really sending a strong message to someone, and you're really not. 
you we want to believe that when someone likes our Facebook page that that has some you know really massive meaning and it and it has some meaning but it it's not as simple as that and so what I what I don't like seeing is when people fall prey to the false promises that technology makes building relationships easier it doesn't relationship building is always going to take work and there's always you know got to be a focus on doing the things taking the actions that you need to take in order to create a long-lasting relationship with someone and so while technology may, may make it easier for us to to create that initial connection the real work comes after that hmm. and it's not going to be done by using the lowest common denominator tools that technology provides you it's going to be done using tried and true methods of how how we connect um, we're sitting here on Skype, you know, face to face. We finally had a, an opportunity to meet really, really face to face. There's a different energy around this meeting on Skype now that we've been able to share the same airspace. Right. And so to the greatest extent possible, the goal with technology should be how do I move people closer and closer to if they were actually sitting across from me face to face, allowing me to tell the story of, of who I am and what my product is about, what my company is about, what my communities are about, how do I do that? What, what, how do these tools help me do that? And not take the simplest route, but take the one that takes you closest to that face to face kind of feeling that you get. The technology has the ability to provide. Okay, so this is, I've got so many different directions we could go here. Where's it gonna be? What door are we gonna choose? <sighs> Um, give us some examples. I guess that's the thing. You know, we've talked about some of the pitfalls and stuff like that. But what are some examples that you can see? Maybe even think about through your own experience with the home that you bought. What are well, some okay, What so, are some examples? I mean, a, a, an example is, um, and I, I think I used it in my presentation. We we moved into this place. I mean, if I took my laptop right now out, I could peer over a fence down into an empty lot that's been sitting there empty for ten years. Ten years. Um, and it's it's a, like a cul-de-sac that never got built. You know, gotcha. the economy took a downturn, and I, I understand all of the economics involved and all this stuff. There's never been a communication with us about what's happening with that piece. It's an eyesore. It's dirt uh, with a with a, a a road and a fence, a construction fence for ten years that's been sitting there. Never a single communication with the rest of us in the community. What are we going to do with this space, if anything? What are the options? You know, as a community, could we have helped in some way? Hmm. You're never going to know unless you ask. Hmm. And so I don't know whether they're, in this particular case, let's use this as an example. Was the builder fearful of what our reaction would be if they said, listen, we're, we're not going to build on this for 10 years? I mean, they probably didn't know. But you understand my point? Yeah, yeah. You have to be willing to engage in a conversation and, and willing to believe that people are, are going, to, going to make decisions that are going to be in the best interest of that community. And if they do, it's probably going to be in your best interest too. There, there's, I will never, ever buy a home from this builder again. And I'm not going to mention that. I will never buy a home from this builder again. And it has nothing to do with this house and that's that's the the secret sauce of everything when it comes to community and and even forget about technology community period uh, what i want when i'm involved with anything especially something that you know touches this close to home i want to believe that the things that i i buy that are important to me um share my values they share a sense of of purpose and you know there's something bigger than just this wall sure do i care what kind of drywall they use sure i care what kind of drywall they use do i care what kind of pipe is it? yeah i care about those things but ultimately my experience with this builder had nothing to do with the quality of their construction and everything to do with the quality of their communication and their desire to create a relationship with me long term Okay, so then how do you address this question when you think about um, when you think about what uh, uh, large builders are fearful? They are they're, sure. they're afraid of the one person who's going to stick a sign in their yard 
um, to make up for the other, you know, one out of ten people could do that. And it takes nine people sitting there singing their praises to yeah. make up for that one person. So that's what they're afraid of. How do they address it? How do they get over that? But, but if they never engage in a conversation that draws their community to them, mm -hmm. how do you go out and find the nine people who are willing to battle the one guy who sticks a sign in his yard? How, how do you identify those people? How do you, how do you make certain that you have the ability to rally them when you need them? You, you can't do that in the moment. No. That's developed over time. Yes, and it takes but, work, and it takes work, and it takes a person, right? Or people. What what's what's your intent? What's your goal? You know, I I I would think that if I were sitting in the boardroom of the builder who built my home, and I were telling this story, that somebody there would be saying, "Okay, that's a problem," right. because we actually would like someone to buy a home from us again, right? And I'll, I'll tell you right now, I'm not the only person in this community that feels the way I feel about that. And they're huh. not a bad builder. They, they're not out of business. They didn't go bankrupt. You know, they're still in existence. Um, but again, well, they're, they're never going to get business from a, a, a fairly substantial percentage of the people that I communicate in, with in this community. You know, what's interesting is I think about, you know, uh, that situation, then I fl flip it around to when, when I was selling uh, for a home builder developer mm -hmm. in our best community, and I lived there. So, and the model home was there. I lived there. I would grab people driving around looking, you know, sure. in my shorts and the shirt and just talk to them. And so much of what was built and the kind of that, that sense of like, this is something different was because the frontline person who was talking to everybody who came in had the relationships with the people that were there and that felt different and i think you see great sales people who are involved that way and really care about the community but it's like what happens when you sell out and you're done and you move out who's left to maintain that right. or who's left to build that do you flip it over and turn it over to your your well here's the, the other neighbors? side of that story here's the other side of that story um we continue to live here right, right. because we love our neighbors and we love this block. You know, we've got six kids. We've got some of our best friends. They also have six kids, four kids, five kids. You know, we've got a lot of kids on this block. They all gather. It, it's a great neighborhood. And so there's a positive energy right. uh, amongst the people who live here that if someone had the vision, could be tapped and turned into something really powerful for that brand. Sure. That's, it's about people, it's about relationships, it's about um, community. And, and those words are, are actually fairly easy to define. They're not difficult words and concepts to understand. You just have to get past the, what I think are the typical things that people focus on when they're talking about brand or when they're talking about um, the objectives of a, of a, of a housing project. You know, the, the, I, I think it's in that moment, that moment when you lose sight of the bigger picture of what you're doing and you begin to see it as just a housing project, you miss the point. You miss the opportunity to use these social technologies that have emerged to bring these people to you in a way that's you know truly special, that truly stands out and allows you to to capture them for life. Okay, so this is this is interesting with the dynamics when you talk about any community, whether it's a community where it's just one builder mm -hmm. in a master plan community or multiple builders, and you see the mistake often where someone goes in and says, I'm gonna create something for fill in the blank home builder in this community, and I, you look at it and you go, but the people walking in, yes, they care about the builder, but ultimately they're moving to the neighborhood, yep. they're moving to the school district, they're moving to the location. That's how we research 85% of the time we're buying a used home Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter who built the house. We just want to yep. know where it is and what it is. So how do you solve that problem of I'm done, I built it, I'm out? Or we have multiple people in one place creating a community. How do you do that when most people can't even get someone internally to manage their online community, let alone for an individual community? Because I think that's the way you go. I, from a builder standpoint, this is what's the most powerful. What are some suggestions or ideas there? Or what do you think? Well, I, I, again, I think it's, it's hard to go back and correct a mistake, but it, it's easier to sort of plan what kinds of things you might do. So if, if I were breaking ground right now on a new home development, I'd, I'd want to make sure all of my online community spaces were already in place. Hmm. 
And every time somebody signed on the dotted line or they came in and expressed interest, I'd invite them into that community. Gotcha. And when that community was done, if internally you didn't want to manage that online space any longer, I'd turn that over to some community members who've been actively involved and let them take over and hand it off. But the conversation and the community gathering and the community building, both online and in terms of how you connect the people in, in the community together, has to start at that very beginning. It has to start when people are excited and interested because they want to know who their new neighbors are going to be. They want to connect to the... And I mean, you if you've moved into a new house, and I know all the builders sort of understand this. They probably heard this story a billion times. It's, it's like going off to war with people. You know, you, a block, you sort of all move in around the same time. You know, there's, there's um, an, an incentive to go and meet your neighbors. And over time, that goes away. You know, a new neighbor moves in three or four houses down. You don't see them. You don't talk to them like you did in the moment, in that time period when everything was new again. And so failing to capture on that sort of built-in energy is the mistake, I think, that's being made. That's the time to do the community building for that specific community, both online and offline. Okay, this is this is good. Let's uh, we'll wrap it here. Um, two pieces of advice I'd like to ask from you. Notice I'm asking a lot of advice because you're because sure. you're a guru. Wait, no, what are you? What's your new label? I forget uh, what it was. Um, call you me whatever. Call me whatever you want. I know. What was it though at the PCBC? I don't. Know. What did... I don't. I don't want to know. I don't even want to use it. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, so. So you got to give an advice to those who are in charge of the marketing for a builder. And then what about the person who is in that community selling, active in that community? There's two kind of different Mm -hmm. roles. So a person who's meeting everybody moving in and then the marketing person for that company. What's some something different you would give them that maybe they haven't heard before? I don't know that I'm going to give them anything I haven't heard before, but from a you know, a lot of people are, we talked about this before we started the show, a lot of people are focusing their efforts on the social spaces um, around, you know, attracting new mm. customers, yeah. you know. Um, and, and I think they're making a mistake. Um, and I think I think the stats are proving out that, you know, the lifetime value of a customer on Twitter or Facebook is not nearly as significant, even as the lifetime value of a customer who finds you on Google. Right. Or you know by clicking on an ad, right? You know it, and it's pretty dramatic. It's not even close. In addition to the fact that, again, there was j- another study released this morning. Here I'm going to move and and give people the name of the company. Um, Syncaps, S Y N C A P S E, uh, released their study, and and basically their study found 78 percent of people who are fans on Facebook pages are already your customers, and so this this focus on marketing and capture and uh, it is the wrong focus I think for the marketing departments in the social space especially in these in these places like Facebook where I, I think that's your opportunity to begin developing these long-term relationships it needs to be you know viewed more in, in, a, in the CRM sense than it is in the, the lead capture sense right. that that shift in thinking is a is a fairly major shift in thinking of how you develop content and how you communicate with people in those spaces. Um, as far as the community managers, man, you got me stumped. I'd have to think about that one for a little bit. If I, if I were a salesperson on, on staff, I'd want some help. You know, it's part of the reason why uh, when we, we built the app for Heartland Homes, that right. was the thinking behind that app. The thinking behind the app was give the salespeople an opportunity to hand somebody a tool that would allow that person to communicate out to their social sphere um, in the moment about the excitement of building the house and snapping photos of that process and using that as a way to attract people to this space. Because um, they're doing I, it they're doing it anyway. They're doing it anyway. We just so, don't, we'd have no idea what's going on and we have no way to encourage it or even incentivize it. I guess if I were the salesperson, I'd be asking the marketing departments, give me a way <laughs> to get these people to engage on my behalf. Right. Give me tools that, that allow me to use this you know, again, this this sort of pent up energy that's ready to explode when somebody's buying a new home and the excitement around that new home. Give me a way to utilize that to attract more people to me. I'd be asking those questions. No, I think that's great. Hey, you know what? Uh, it's always good talking with you. I always love the way that you think about things, and I think uh, 
in this new market, you know, we went from a, a, a an economy or a, a market where we didn't have enough time to deal with it or money to deal with this, you know, not enough people. Yeah. And now we're quickly moving back to it doesn't even matter anymore. And I'm a little concerned and worried that customer service is going to be one of those things that flies out the door. Um, I and I and I think that we've got some different opportunities here. And what you shared at PCBC and what you just shared now is just an example of if we just pay more attention to this stuff, it's going to serve us. It's a long-term, it's a marathon type of deal. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. Yeah. No, but it's good. Hey, guys, details on Jeff are going to be below. Uh, everything that you need to connect with him, you should follow him for sure on Twitter. Um, he's got great stuff. Jeff, thank you so much for your time. Mike, I really thanks. appreciate, I appreciate it. it. Yeah, you have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.